Algo Racing is a game that teaches kids of all ages to code. Using these cards, we will compile algorithms for rovers that investigate the surface of an uncharted planet in the search for life samples. There are four rovers, and the game can be played by two, three, or four people. The box also includes five movable hill boxes, two for the simple one and three for the more advanced one. The game has two levels of difficulty. So this is the double-sided game board, and the side with the large squares is for basic rules and kids up to 10 years old. The 9x9 game board is for more experienced players, and it offers additional game options. The players take turns making algorithms out of their cards. The player's rovers execute the actions described in the algorithms on the game board. The game's objective is to collect life sample tokens and to deliver them to the labs. Each token delivered to the lab earns a player one or two points. Whoever collects the necessary amount of points the fastest wins. The rules of the game are simple and logical, and figuring them out is easy. You'll have lots of fun playing this game. Let's prepare everything for the game. Using the 6x6 game board, we'll place two hill blocks with large squares anywhere we like. It can be done like this, or like this. Next, we take 12 life sample tokens, three of each kind. Put them face down on the table, shuffle, and then place them on the special marks on the game board. You can put some of the tokens on the hill blocks. Don't worry if some marks remain vacant. After the game board is set, the players choose the color of their rover and base and determine who goes first. The last turn player is the first to choose his corner of the game board and to put his base token there. The player who goes first is the last one to put his base token down. The players place their rovers on top of these base tokens. The rovers shouldn't face the wall, so put their nose forward in either direction. If only two or three people are playing, place the extra base tokens in the free corners of the game board as all of the bases are necessary. Take the teleport and cycle cards out of the deck. There's no need for them in this version of the game. But deal each player five cards. And now the cards have players with commands on them. So let's figure out what they mean. Step forward. The rover moves one square forward if there are no obstructions. Obstructions include border of the game board, border of the hill block, stone wall, or another rover. All the way forward. The rover goes forward until it encounters an obstruction or a life sample. On encountering an obstruction, it stops on the square in front of it. On encountering a life sample, it stops on its square and picks the sample up. Jump. The rover moves one square forward. If there is a wall in front of it, it jumps over. If it finds itself on the border of the block or in front of it, it jumps off or on the hill block. Turn U-turn. The rover turns right, left or makes a U-turn, but remains on its current square. So now let's make some moves. Let's see what can and cannot be done during one's turn. The player takes one to three command cards from his hand and puts them in a row. The player moves the rover on the game board in accordance with the algorithm that he made. For example, the green player makes an algorithm that has the rover move all the way forward to the hill block, then jump, and then make another step forward. The played cards are moved to the discard pile. The player takes new cards to have five in his hands. The turn moves to the next player. The player may forego his turn by saying I pass, and in this case, he can replace any number of cards in his hand by moving them to the discard pile and taking new ones from the deck. If the card deck runs out in the course of the game, the discard pile is reshuffled and turned into the game deck. When a rover reaches a square with a life sample, the sample is picked up but the token is kept face down. The player can only learn the exact kind of the life sample after delivering it to the lab. To earn the points, the samples have to be delivered to one of the labs. Under the basic rules, the life samples can be delivered to any lab on the game board. The rovers can only go forward and cannot move sideways or backwards. If the algorithm contains a command that cannot be executed, for example, step forward, when the rover is facing the wall or stands on the precipice, 
Such command is skipped and the rover moves to the subsequent command. The rover's maximum capacity is three life samples. After that, it has to unload them at the lab. Once the rover with samples reaches the lab, the players turn the onboard life sample tokens face up and counts the points that he earned. There's no need to interrupt the algorithm if the rover picks up a life sample or reaches the lab. So with the right algorithm, the player can collect two life samples in one turn. If rover A is unable to execute or complete the command in its algorithm because the square is occupied by the rival rover B, it stops on the square in front of it, as it was a wall, and performs the rest of the algorithm's commands if possible. As compensation for creating the obstruction, the green rover passes a life sample to the red one, provided it does have at least one life sample on board. The token is passed along face down. If the red rover already has three samples on board, it won't be able to take one more, and the green rover gets to keep its sample. After initial encounter, rovers can no longer receive such compensations from each other until at least one of them has moved to a different square, leaving the initial position. This means that if the rovers are facing each other, the green rover can't attack the red one from the same position, and it has to change its location first. The game ends when one of the player collects 7 points and becomes the winner. It can happen sometimes that all the life samples are collected and delivered to the lab, but nobody has earned 7 points. In this case, the game ends and whoever has the most points wins. How do we count the points? The player gets 2 points for each new kind of life sample delivered to the lab, and 1 point for each subsequent sample of this kind. For example, if a player delivers 2 yellow samples and 1 blue, he'll collect 2 points, first yellow, plus 1 point, second yellow plus two points, first blue. Now let's talk about extended rules. Overall, the game process is similar to the basic version, but there are additional elements and options which make the game more intense and varied. Cycle and teleport cards such as these are added to the card deck. Cycles times two and times three. These are placed above the cards of the main algorithm. The cycle card can be placed vertically above one command card, which means that this specific command will be repeated two or three times, or it can be placed horizontally above two command cards, and the commands will be executed one after another two or three times. For example, if cycle times two is placed above commands right and forward, the rover has to move right, forward, right, forward. Teleport. By using the teleport impulse, the player can move the rival's rover to the base, or a life sample closer to itself. The rover can only send this impulse forward. The impulse affects the first object in its way, be it another rover or life samples. The signal can travel through the walls, but not the block, because it can only act on the same plane as the rover, and cannot therefore jump up or down the hill blocks. If another rover ends up in the way of the signal, it's teleported back to its own base. Following teleportation, the rover retains the direction of the movement it had on the game board prior to being teleported. If the teleported rover had any life samples on board, they remain on the square from which it was teleported to the base, and the player has to put them face down on this square. If the home base is occupied by another rover at that moment, it cannot be used and the teleport command doesn't work. If the impulse hits a life sample, the sample is teleported one square towards the rover. If there are several life samples on the square, they are all moved together and the samples can be teleported through the walls by the way. Under complete rules, we use the 9x9 game board and these three hill blocks. One of the hill blocks has two stories. Its top can't be reached in one jump from the lowest level. The rover either has to jump from the adjacent one-story block or use the elevator. All 20 life sample tokens are placed on the board with five tokens of each kind. The winner has to earn nine points and the counter method is the same as in the basic version. 
and this time the base tokens should be placed three coloured side up. Each token is marked as the home base for the rover of specific colour. This is where it starts and where it returns if it's teleported from the game board. The token also marks the labs for two rovers of other colours. This means that after picking up a life sample, the player has to bring it to the base token, which has a lab of his colour. The blocks are equipped with elevators that the rovers can use to go up and down the blocks without the jump card. The elevator's upper platform is marked with arrows on the block, and the square adjacent to the elevator is considered its lower platform. Ascent and descent happen automatically, regardless of player's wishes, if, after executing the algorithm, the rover ends on the lower or upper platform. If the elevator is busy because another rover is on the upper or the lower platform, it fails to operate. At the same time, the rover, which prevents the elevator ascent or descent, has to pay compensation for the obstruction by giving away one life sample, just like it happens with an encounter on the game board. If by player's next turn, the elevator is no longer occupied, then the turn begins with the elevator moving the rover. When moved by the elevator, the rover doesn't turn from side to side and it arrives at its final destination in the same position. If the elevator faces the border of the game board, it's considered to be non-functioning. Just like in the basic rules, the player can place one to three cards on the table and the rover then executes the algorithm. The difference is, players not only create their own algorithms from scratch, but also use their rivals' algorithms, transforming them. How does this happen? The first player creates an algorithm from scratch, executes it with his rover, and transfers the algorithm to the next player. The algorithm is then modified and executed by other players until it reaches its limit of five cards. The cycle cards are not taken into account. If during his turn a player extends the algorithm to five cards, it cannot be made any longer. The algorithm is executed and all of the cards are moved to the discard pile. The next player begins the new algorithm from scratch. To avoid confusion, add a corresponding mark at the start of the algorithm. When modifying the algorithm, the player can place the cards in front, behind or between the previously placed cards and even cover the previous cards with the new ones. The player cannot simply remove the cards from the algorithm, except for the cycle cards, which can be removed at will. If a card's placement under the cycle card was changed by moving or covering it, the cycle card is moved to the discard pile. The player can use his previous algorithm to move the rover without making changes to the command sequence. The player can also forego his turn by saying I pass, in which case he doesn't change the algorithm, he doesn't move the rover and he can replace any cards in his hands. Let's take a look. Player 1 makes an algorithm and executes it. Forward, right, forward. Player 2 adds 3 cards and executes 2 jumps, a turn and a teleport. Player 3 adds 1 card and removes the cycle card. His movement are as follows. Jump, forward all the way, turn to the right and teleport. Player 1 adds 2 cards and their number reaches 5. This means that after the algorithm is executed, all cards go to the discard pile. Player 2 begins a new algorithm from scratch. And that's all. Have a great time playing.